Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Unlocked. I am your host for the next 30 minutes or so. My name is Tracy Wilson, and I am going to bring to you a real treat today. I have got a very special guest with me, Amber Mirza. And Amber is somebody that you want to be listening to. So today's topic I absolutely love, like more than a pipe dream, the secrets to creating clarity and ethical profitability. Now, Amber believes in looking at everything in your business because it all impacts you in some way or another. And what she does is she uses a process where she does this deep dive to assess and analyze your entire business before you know she sort of gets started working with you. Because when you do that, you can uncover so many different things. Things. So on today's show, we're going to be having a bit of a conversation. As we always do, we'll be unlocking a whole lot of her little, you know, secrets, tips, tricks and strategies that she uses for herself and also for her clients. The other things that I love about um, Amber and what it is that she's doing, she's super ethical. So everything that Amber does, she always comes at things from, a, you know, from the highest of, uh, of ethics and always comes at it from a place of being extremely authentic. So I absolutely love that about Amber and that is exactly why I wanted to have her on the Unlock show. So welcome to the show Amber, great to have you here. Oh my gosh, how kind is that? You always make me feel so wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here. You're welcome and you should feel wonderful because you do some really awesome stuff that's you know that's all part of this right it's like you know when you're building a platform like this it's really interesting because um a part of of i suppose a whole philosophy of unlocked is helping you know me being unlocked sharing all of my my knowledge skills expertise with other people so that they can take them away and use them but also providing a platform for other people just like you to come and share you know your knowledge your expertise um and actually feel like you've got really good stuff to share and you don't get to come on the show unless you do so that's that's you know that's why you're here today so I um I said to Amber before we jumped on because often you know we get on these shows and it, it can be a bit nerve-wracking right this is live we don't script nothing scripted nothing is um you know is planned beforehand it's like we're just going to have a really good conversation about um you know about where you've been what you're doing and uh and how you're really helping people and I know that the the bullet points that Amber has given me today I am really excited about so I want to get stuck into these but firstly Tell us a little bit about you, Amber. Who's Amber Merzo? Why did you, why are you doing what you're doing now? And, and tell us a little bit about your background. I'm a dreamer. I really am. And I know there is this whole concept about, well, if you're practical, if you're in business, if you're actually going somewhere, if if you know, if you've got a direction for your life, you really cannot be a dreamer. And I challenge that because I am a business strategist and I'm a holistic business strategist because I love to look at every facet of what could possibly affect your business and especially your life because your business is a part of your life, right? But when I look around this wonderful world of ours with the challenges, all the different things that come up to make us more creative, I look at the dreamers and just how creative they are in making things better and adding more value. So for me, as a business strategist, I choose to be a dreamer. And that's why I do things, because I see entrepreneurs making their mark on the world, but sometimes forgetting to live their life the way they really were meant to live it and why they got into this life in the first place. So I'm on a mission to unlock the dreamer in every entrepreneur. <laughs> I, I absolutely love that. And you know, it's funny because you know, when we were kids, right? I mean, I can remember back, um, you know, looking out the window, dreaming about different things. And you'd often be called, oh, you're just a dreamer. Roll my, you know, roll the eyes. You're just, you know, dreaming. You're never going to get there. And and somehow throughout our lives, that whole, you know, being a dreamer um, gets beaten out of you. You know, you shouldn't be a dreamer. You've got to be practical. You need to, you know, be strategic. Think about things. No point being up there in the clouds. So I love the fact that you're, you know, you're really um, saying to people, it's okay to dream. And I, I read on uh, some of the material that you've got online, you know, about, you know, dream, dreaming big and then playing even bigger. Mm -hmm. So talk, talk to me about that, like where that concept of like dreaming big, thinking about what, and when you talk about dreaming big, explain to us what exactly do you mean? 
So there is a difference, right? When you're a dreamer, and I think people get confused because they're like, oh, you've got, just like you said, you've got your head in the clouds, right? But there are dreamers with direction where you have a starting point, you know where you want to go, you know the impact you want to make. And then you let your, you create the space around you or somebody helps you create that space around you that just liberates that creativity where you now know that you, of course, all of us have challenges and obstacles and bumps along the way, right? But when you start to change your definition of how you look at it, then those obstacles become your launching pads, right? And that whole ability to set bigger direction points for yourself, right? I hesitate to always use the word goals because goals can change depending on, you have to be fluid in life, right? You have to be flexible. For me, it's like you set yourself a direction of where you want to be and your your goals are always evolving because you are always evolving, right? So your dream just gets bigger and bigger because the impact you're making is bigger. But when your dream is bigger, the direction you're going in is set and you're like, okay, I'm after this. Then the play that you're making every time you look at that big dream just continues to get bigger. The number of lives you reach and you touch and you impact and the lives those lives touch, right? It's the ripple effect. I love that. So for mm-hmm. me, it's about not just the lives I'm touching, but I want to touch the lives of the people that they are touching. It's massive. Absolutely. And I think sometimes we, we often underestimate how uh, how much impact we can actually make. And, you know, you alluded to this earlier, you were saying, you know, with everything that's going on in the world right now, with all the things that are happening, and a lot of it's, you know, not always not always in the positive um, light. Right. But if we personally can can step up and we're ready to, you know, ready to share our message, do our thing um, and stand out whilst we're doing that, like you say, it has that ripple effect. You know, one person then becomes two people that becomes, you know, and it's that multiplier effect. So I'm going to, you know, as to say, it's sort of like the whole COVID effect where, you know, one person gets infected and then all of a sudden, oh, my God, it's got out of control. I mean, that is, that is actually the same sort of thing that you can do personally if you are prepared, uh, you know, to step up and, and start speaking your, your message. And that whole, I love that um, the piece around, I love that, uh, you know, a dreamer with direction. Uh, that is, um, you know, brilliant there because it's not about not being a dreamer, but it's having that dream and then then having some direction to get there. So let's talk about that a little bit because um, you also mentioned that, that I suppose the direction is also part of clarity, right? So how does, when you're, when we're dreaming really, really big and often we get, you know, patted down and say, oh, you know, you shouldn't dream that big, you know, get get back with the reality. How does somebody hang on to that big dream that gives them the clarity and then formulates their direction to get there? What, what do they do? I love to use what I call my three lenses. Okay, everything I look at, it's literally using those lenses. And like most things in life, they're pretty simple. The first thing I use is, is it clear? The second lens is, is it simple? And the third lens is, is it strategic? Because when I look at everything that I'm choosing to do, what I'm choosing to teach, what I'm choosing to implement in my business, even the direction that I'm choosing, right? And how I'm going to get there. Because once you have a a good strategy, you can plug in the right tactics. You know that, right? So, but complexity I find is in my experience anyways, complexity is the enemy of uh, just making life what you want it to be. And, And even for dreaming big or getting anything done, if you can reduce it to a simple level that is so clear that it connects with the people you're trying to reach, life is simple, right? Mm -hmm. And those three questions, those three lenses have served me so well in keeping my dream real. Right? Because it's one thing to have a really big vision, but if you cannot translate it to something that you can actually put on paper or you know anywhere where you're mapping things out and figure out a path to make it achievable, it's really hard to get there. And I, I think it's tragic when people get caught up in the grind and just trying to 
pound, 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 trying to get somewhere and they lose their heart, they lose their energy. And then life doesn't look the same, right? But if you yeah. simplify it, if you just look at it and say, can I make it simpler? Is it clear? Is it talking to the people I want to talk to? You don't even have to sell anything because you're actually just then talking to the people and you're literally making things simple for them, providing the solutions, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I, th you know, one of the things that often is a, um, I suppose, is a big curse to a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners, is that we, you know, we often think we have to make things complex. You know, when we make things complex, we're really smart, um, and you know, and and then other people can't understand it. So when you do that, from an inverted compass, when you when you kind of make things complex that others don't understand it, people think that that makes you look like you're really smart. When in fact, what you're talking about is actually simplifying this down to almost the most simplest form that makes it clear, concise, that you then can formulate a pathway to get you to your big, you know, to your big goal. The other thing, so when you're doing that, um, often because you've got such a big goal and we're dreaming really big, we try and, you know, a lot of people will try and create a strategic plan that is going to go from zero to their massive big dream um, and try and do it, you know, overnight. And sometimes even in a year, I've heard people go, hey, I want to create a business. I want to make a million dollars in this year. And then when they get eight months down the track, it's like, oh, crap, I didn't get there. So therefore, there's something wrong with me. So, so what, are, what are some of the strategies um, and tactics that you can do that really help you to put to keep it clear, keep it simple, but keep you in alignment with your strategic plan, goal, and your dream? Tracy, I love that question because it's true. You know, big dreams or big goals or big visions, they sound really big, but when you actually boil them down, they're pretty simple, right? At the end of the day, what are you trying to what are you trying to touch? Right? And I have learned from so many incredible people, so I know the value of mentors and guides and, and supports around you. One of the one, uh, words that um, comes to my mind is, I think it was Stacey Martino who talked about the yellow brick road, and oh, she yes. talked about mm -hmm. the next step, right? Mm -hmm. So Steve, another gentleman that you know I got to know last year, Steve Larson, same thing, over and over and over again, you hear these things you may have a 45 step plan, but all you really need to concentrate on and focus on is your step one. And after mm -hmm. you get to step one, get to step two. So what I do for myself, and I have to sometimes think because I like to go fast, right? So for me, it's like, okay, where am I going? Where am I going? Mm -hmm. And then I take a deep breath. I take a look at it and say, yeah, okay, that's cool. But let's reverse engineering. What is the only thing that I need to focus on for me to get to the next step? That seems really clear and really simple. And um, guys, if you, I mean, I'm hoping that that is an absolute gold nugget right there because she is absolutely right. Um, if you are trying to achieve something in your business right now, you just want to be looking at what is the very next thing. What is the thing that I need to do today when I get off of, you know, watching Tracy and Amber today? What is the one thing that I can achieve today? Because then you're going to have that um, compound effect. You know, tomorrow you'll add another thing to it. You'll take the next step and the next step and the next step. And before you know it, those 45 steps, well, you've taken them all and you're resetting. You're, t you're resetting another 45 steps, right? And Tracy, you are so amazing. You know what? Because you encapsulated that into something that somebody can just take and use it every morning when i get i think to myself i actually map out a time i used to feel super guilty about it because i have like a schmuck load long list right and i always used to feel guilty that oh my gosh i need to just get right on it i don't anymore i actually have a block of time and it works differently for different people some people like to plan it you know midday or whatever but whatever works for you have a section of time that is your most productive you can be quiet at that time you take a look and you decide the one thing that big domino that's going to mm -hmm. just crush the other dominoes if that if you accomplish that one thing and you feel like oh my gosh if 
this is the only thing I got done, but that made the needle move for my business or whatever goal I've set. Mm -hmm. That's the thing I'm doing. I promise you, you don't have to do 45 things that day. You literally don't. Just do that one thing and yeah, do it at your I, most productive time. <laughs> I mean, that. I mean that's a great analogy of having like the, the situation of the domino, you know, looking at, oh my God, I've got this big list of things to do, but just pick the one thing that is going to give you the biggest impact that is going to move that needle, that is going to knock down as many of the other dominoes as possible and do that. And before you know it, boy, you, you, that's the way in which you get real momentum in your business and you can go like you're talking about you know i feel like sometimes you know i don't want to take one step i want to go fast i like i like to do things fast the way that you do things fast by still making this simple making it clear by doing one thing is figuring out looking at that list and grabbing the one big domino and doing that because then you're probably going to knock down three or four things at the same time awesome advice. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is I know Amber and I have had a number of conversations about this in the past and, you know, and it really does come down to like the foundations of your business because what I see and a lot of the time, um, you know, people will come to me and they're all sort of already, you know, months down the track or sometimes even years down the track and they are trying to take their business to the next level. And when I start to ask them, start to dig a little bit deeper and start to ask them questions about the foundations of their business, often I find that there are none. You know, we're kind of trying to build this business on quicksand or, you know, moving silt. So let's talk about a little bit about, you know, why foundation, why building foundations are so important and it is not. So this is also a... Um, I suppose, uh, uh, something that people often think, oh, I only need that when I'm starting out. Let's talk about that and the reasons why it's not just for people that are starting out. I think, and I'm sure that just about everybody listening who has been on this journey for having a business of your own or, you know, have, dreaming that entrepreneurial dream, you know that when you're launching there are so many things going on, so many moving pieces, and you think you've gotten, you're listening to so many people trying to implement, and you're trying to wear all the darn hats you possibly can, right? Mm -hmm. But in my experience, and I learned this the hard way, um, if you narrow things down to what are some of the really basic foundational things you need to have in place, your life becomes easier right? But so many people skip that because it seems too simple. It seems too basic. And I just want to get to that seven figure thing, right? And mm -hmm. sometimes you're actually even selling a bunch of things and you're, you're, you're think you're crushing it, but the foundation is still really weak because when you, when you start to take a look to see where these things actually addressed, can this, can my business, the everything that I built, is it Hmm. is my livelihood protected? Is everything that I have built going to be there if there is a crisis? Like, take a look around. COVID really hit people hard, not because they weren't good businesses, but because those foundation elements were not necessarily there, right? So every so often, I really think that it is irresponsible for, for us as business owners not to assess again are those foundations still in place? Do I need to reassess and look at what has changed? Do I need to support something that is foundational, right? Again, am I looking at my customers? Have my customers changed? Has my ideal customer still the same customer that I was talking to before? What is my market like? Has the industry changed? What are the trends that are coming up and how is that affecting my industry, my market, and really my ecosystem, right? There yeah. are so many, like we can talk for months on this. It's, there's so much stuff. And um, unfortunately, even established businesses don't always have them in place. I talk to people sometimes about their competition. They have no clue, right? Mm -hmm. And how can you how can you really thrive to the level you're meant to? And you really can, right? Because we all have the potential, but how can you possibly do that if you don't know what your ecosystem is like and how is that impacting you? Absolutely. You've actually just reminded me, and I might, um, I will put this link in uh, today's show notes, 
but I've got a document called the Business Gap Analysis, and I'll put that um, in there for people to be able to download because it actually goes through these things. It will give you an opportunity to look at your business, analyze and assess it um, in each of the different areas, and then you can make an informed decision about, you know, what's the what's the, the one thing that I can do right now, you know, maybe to improve in my business or set up in my business that's going to help me move that uh, move that needle and move my business forward. So uh, the things, um, so let's also help people in, t in terms of if they're setting up their business, like I, I work on six key things that they need to be uh, looking at as far as foundations are concerned. Yours might be a little bit different to mine, um, but let's, have you got like a set of, of specific, specific um, categories in a business that they should really be looking at in terms of setting up foundations? There are 14 um, broader ones that I go through mm -hmm. in every assessment. Um, and then there are six key systems, just like yourself. Oh, now I'm curious about yours, but there's mm -hmm. six key systems that I always look at when I look at the health of a business, right? So those key areas definitely, like, you know, I, I look at systems, I look at people, because without people, mm -hmm. you don't really have a profitable business, right? Mm -hmm. I look at, you know, finance and profitability. I look at marketing, like I look at, so it, to me, it's almost like a really awesome engine that works really mm -hmm. well when all the cylinders are kicking. Right. Yeah, beautiful. So I mean, perfect because you're you're on. You know, we I think we might be uh, singing from the same hymn sheet here. So you know, and it goes. It, needless to say, that these are the basic foundations of a business. And like you say, yes, there are more subcategories within them, but you kind of start at the top level with these, what I call them the big six, and then you can break them down from there. So mine would be admin, marketing, sales, finances, team, and then do not forget your mindset, which is um, you know really really, really important thing. So also one of the things, um, one of those categories, and I'm going to just highlight it right now, is marketing. And and often people think, oh, you know, I need to get more clients in or I need to I make more sales or, um, you know, I want to grow my business. So the answer, ting ting, is marketing. Sometimes it's not the answer. So let's talk about that. When is marketing not the answer? Oh my gosh, that's one of my favorite questions. Just because we are so used to thinking, you know, if I have more clients, I will do so much better. I'll make so much more money. I'll be able to take time off. You know, this is just the thing that's missing in my business. And yet, depending on where you are in your business journey, where you, what exactly is the gap? Sometimes having more clients is what will actually drive your business to the ground. And that would be that last nail in that coffin. It sounds so counterintuitive. How can more customers make me less profitable? But mm -hmm. that's the key thing, profit. What's affecting your profit margin? Why are you not making money? Before you jump to marketing as a solution, you actually have to take a look to see what's wrong with this engine, right? What's wrong mm -hmm. with this machine? Once you pinpoint where the gap is, what's the thing that's stopping you? Marketing may be the answer, but you don't know that until you look at it. Sometimes having more customers is going to deplete your resources, put incredible pressure on your cash flow and systems, right? So if you don't have the resources, you can't handle those clients, right? Mm -hmm. But you won't know that until you get to know your business and what's really affecting it, the needles, all the needles that are actually poking at it and affecting at it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like pistons on in a car, right? If the if you got one of them not working right, well, you got to you're going to have a big problem. So, um, y yes, I, I I I also see that often where people are thinking marketing's the answer. I'll just do more of that. And given I've got a marketing agency, obviously we've got a, a background in business too. So I sort of can look at this and go, actually, marketing's not the right thing for you to do right now. It's not always the answer. Um, in a lot of cases, it absolutely is, but it's not always. Getting the foundations right, understanding, you know, profit margins, understanding markup versus, you know, profit, uh, sorry, margin versus uh, markup, you know, all yeah. of those fundamental things, how to read your balance sheet, really important basic business building um, skills that a business owner should have. And obviously they can, you know, learn a lot of stuff 
learn a lot of that stuff from you um, through the, the holistic business um, strategies that you use. So, and, Sorry, I'm going to interject and add one more yeah. thing. Please one, of, one of my, my little mini quests is to relieve the pressure on the business owner, right? Because we get so busy being in our business we don't really have a business the business has us right so when i'm teaching the business owners and just showing them the the path right because my job is to be that guide who makes that journey a little bit easier right one of the things that i like to do is plug them into the right resources so all of this information that they need is there but they don't have to be the ones learning all of it and implementing all of it because I want to get you away from the grind. The you know my mission is to create that space around you so you can do what you do really really well. You can be more of the directional dreamer now because you have mm -hmm. that space, right? So mm -hmm. just wanting to make sure I'm not expecting you to do all of it, but I am expecting you to know that it is needed and who are the supports you need to plug in so you can breathe you can don't have to live inside your business yeah well it's like you become to use the analogy of the helicopter pilot right you know you, you kind of can raise yourself up you can see what's going on get a good vision of what's happening with your business also right. be able to lead your people to the right place you know it has them looking forward looking up to where to where they've got to go and it instills that sense of of dreaming with them too they're able to take the the vision the dream that you have um, and when you can attach that from a, a point of view of them being, you know, passionate about it, it has purpose. They turn up to work every day feeling like they have a reason to be there because they're changing lives, they're making that ripple effect, yeah. and they're actually on the journey with you. That, like you say, it's, I love that where you're talking about giving yourself some space to breathe and to think because when you can have that, what happens? Well, your mind is able to have the space to be able to expand, to dream bigger, to do more, to play bigger, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I couldn't agree with you more. It isn't about you know trying to be all trying to do everything yourself. It's about allowing yourself the time and space and bringing people along on the journey with you and allowing them their moments to shine too. Mm. So I want to uh, I want to make sure that hey guys for, for those of you who um, also are not inside of the Success Secrets for Business, Family and Life group on Facebook, um, you want to get yourself in on over there because we have a number of shows that are happening on the regular on a regular basis every single day inside of that group. So it's not just the Unlock Show that's happening in there. There's uh, there's a show another perspective. There's all, we also do the weather in there. Um, who would have thought? So we have everything covered. You want to make sure that you get in there because we're talking about things that will help you thrive in your business your family and in your life and amber spoke about this earlier she said something to the effect of when you have a business it becomes part of your life it is it's it, it is you want to bring all of you to that you want your life to be um you know you want the business to be created so that you can have a life not the other way around not for it to be all consuming so I think we have covered like a stack of stuff today. There's so many like golden nuggets that have been dropped inside of um, just today's show only. The biggest thing that I've seen or that I've heard today, but I think is the best piece of advice is like, look at that one thing. I love the big domino and just going, what is it that I can do that I can, today that is going to help me move forward, that is going to have the biggest impact if that's all you got out of today's show and believe me there's lots more you know lots more nuggets that have been dropped there's only one thing that is the one thing that is going to help propel you forward and give you massive momentum tell us amber people are going to want to um hang out with you and and you know see more of you where can they go to to uh get more of amber mercer so i was going to give you um, and all of your amazing audience, because I've attended shows. I, you guys have the best people attending and supportive, such kind people. But anyway, I was going to give everybody an, a, one of the things that I think it's so cool, like what are some of the 
best times to connect with your audience, right? Where you're going to have the biggest impact, you're not, because we all are busy. We don't want to be doing things over and over again. And we certainly don't want to be, you know, spamming people. So sometimes it's like this optimization thing. So I was going to share that and I'm happy to do that. If anybody would like to go to um, triple W holistic growth strategies.com slash unlocked. Give me a little bit of time, please. My team is actually plugging in the URLs because we had to change service providers. I was telling Tracy earlier, but that's going to be ready for you. But I also want to share with you, this is like one of those big goals I've set for myself. Mm -hmm. If I actually think about it, I'm going to start hyperventilating because this was supposed to be getting done over eight weeks. And I decided that the time is right now for me to just do it. So I'm doing a challenge. The first one, Tracy, get this. I'm actually going to launch it on the 24th of September. It's not going to be fancy. It's not going to be big. I don't even have time to go and promote it. But I'm going to go live and I'm going to share with people my five-day challenge to unlock the dreamer in you. Okay, so Perfect. I love it. <laughs> and for that, it's going to be unlockthedreamer.com slash challenge. So there is a wait list going, go and please opt in. I would love to have you on that journey. And again, give, give me a little bit of time, please, because right now it's not live. The team is working on it tomorrow. It should be cool. <laughs> Perfect. Well, tomorrow, guys, we'll get Amber to jump back in to uh, the Success Secrets for Business, Family and Life group on the thread where this show is being uh, run live right now. We'll make sure that Amber puts that link in there so that you guys can connect with her. But also you'll be seeing right now on the bottom of the screen, there is a, um, we've got something running across there that tells you where you can go and hang out and get more of Amber Mercer. And I think you really should. So anyway, we have absolutely loved um, having you on the show, Amber. Love your energy, love what you're about. Um, and I, I I can't wait to see you being able to unlock, you know, many more dreamers within, uh, within, you know, people. I'm sure that we're going to see a ripple effect and more entrepreneurs uh, be birthed because they have, you know, dialed in to their inner genius and are now using, you know, their, their, their dreaming skills to be able to create something pretty amazing for themselves. So thank you so much for being on the Unlock Show. Thank you. This was such a treat. <laughs> Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me. Now, as you guys know, Fridays, I'm back again on Friday. This Friday, I've got the um, the fourth series in the authority um, the authority program that I've been doing every single Friday. You want to make sure that you are here. It's the authentic brand effect. I'll be doing part four. Part four is all about building your anchor platform. So if you have been following along, you want to make sure that you're here on Friday because I'm going to be telling you what it is that you need to do and the best way to start creating yourself a platform that is going to enable you to create authority and influence really, really quickly. So you want to be on that show 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Brisbane time uh, this Friday. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys uh, on the show again next week. Oh, sorry, on Friday and then again next week, every single week, Wednesdays and Fridays. So I want to thank you guys so much for being here on the Unlock Show with us today. I'm Tracy Wilson, and I want to make sure that you guys walk away from every one of these shows with the thought that you can live your life unlocked because there is just no other way. Do not live your life locked up. You want to make sure that you take those shackles off, unlock yourself and go and be the best you possibly can be. So have an amazing day and I'll see you guys again on Friday. Thanks for joining. Bye.